Ladies and gentlemen, the League of Fortitude has officially begun. I'm super, super excited about this. We had a great turnout for the first race. It was an awesome time. Uh, it ran Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. If you guys want to get in on this, join my Discord. The link will be in the description. Just look through the rules and the announcements and the schedule. Uh, the first race that came up that was chosen by the wheel was the SRX Sandstorm, which is basically SRXs at Laguna Seca for 25 laps. Um, like I said, it was a great time. I uh, was lucky enough to have Joe join me in the booth. So uh, this is the race. If you guys want to join in on this, like I said, it's basically first come, first join. Um, every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. All the information you will need is in the Discord, in the League section. So this is how it went. Thanks, guys. All right, Joe. Here we go. I will always say that it is tough to not pick Nicholas Warfield to win a road race. You know, you're not wrong there. The kid's got experience. He's got the skill. He's got the drive. Look at and Robin. he's got the know-how. I love her watermelon car. Yeah, oh my god. That thing is cute as hell. Watermelon. You gotta hand it over to Phil Connor, though. He's got that really sharp-looking teal and chrome Looney Tunes mobile. Looney but Tunes. I spy something a little different. Who could this be? I don't know. I don't know what number. Hold on. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> Who is it are you looking at? The number is that the number twenty of Russell Martin Butt Crack Motorsports. Now how do you not root for a guy with butt crack motorsports? <laughs> I don't know, but uh something tells me Something tells me it's going to be like a smelly or sweaty or God, I don't know, situation <laughs> going on here at some point with that guy. Oh, ugh. so we got Tim Junk got the pole. I'm surprised to see anybody beat Nick Warfield. All right. And we're off oh. 25 laps of whatever this is. This is this is League of Fortitude in its finest. Oh, they're coming into the turn. Nobody touches. Oh, oh one spinning. There's one. That looks like Cameron Craighead, number 58. He's still a little loose as he gets into the corner, but he keeps it off the 80. Yeah, he uh, actually kept it straight. Not too much damage to that car. Just a little bit on the right front, some scrapes. But Phil Connor right behind him, looking like he's just going to take it nice and easy here oh maybe i'm wrong he darts to the inside oh they're wrecking that's warfield that's off in the sand as well as the number 138 oh in the 80 everybody's wow. just jack brown in the 180 tristan adams with some damage something his hood is flapping ra really bad sorry sorry oh yeah looky there Looks like uh, Nicholas Adams got around uh, Tim Junk here. Right now, it Already? is a one-two battle for first. Oh, the corkscrew is us is a parking spot. Oh no! Who was Tristan who? Adams? Let's just rejoin. Right, the car's coming. Oh, we're gonna have to go back and look and see what happened there. Back up. Oh my. Oh, just overdrive in the corner there. Yeah. A lot of missed braking zones. That's the way she goes, though. Warfield sneaks his way through there. Yeah, he didn't sound too thrilled. Junk back around Nick Adams again. Yeah, they are pretty evenly matched. I'm curious to see how people did their setups here. Oh, Rick Evans was off track a little bit there. All right, I'm going to switch to... Gave Phil Connor an opportunity to sneak around him. And there's Justin. He's the biggest wild card I think we have. That dude will sometimes just come out of nowhere and win a race. But that's typically at super speedways. 
But he did qualify yeah. second here. And it looks like he's working his way back through the field. Russell Martin, Butt Crack Motorsports, having a little trouble there as they come up to the corkscrew. I kind of want to root for him just for his team name. It's a it's a unique name. It's not something you'd see in NASCAR, that's for sure. But wait, wait, what's I, I, the rear of his car say? Hang on. Oh, I gotta go to Chase here. here. Fun. I'm not your wife, so get off my. <laughs> that's uh, brilliant. That is brilliant. Check back in with the leaders here. They're still battling it. Yeah, yeah, it looks are. like Adams might have some advantage in some corners, but Tim's got a little more knowledge in others. We got our pal Gary. He's uh, about to get lapped here. I love that paint. It looks like a Ferrari F40. I forgot how bad these mountain motors had tons of torque. <laughs> we were just talking about you, buddy. As a matter of fact, they're bringing the F40 back, if you didn't know. What? They're going to redo it. Now, the let me tell you, I've heard a lot of rumors about the DeLorean coming back. Uh, silly thing, I actually followed the TikTok of the De, uh, DeLorean's son, who does want to bring the car back, but he was bringing back a three-wheeled version. Oh, Rick oh. Evans off the track there, but he manages to keep it together, losing a position. Yeah, I saw that. Justin Oh, there goes another one. Yeah, who is that? That's Ray Coyle. Oh, and he just tows. Probably didn't want to wreck anybody. Probably not. Oh, it looks like Adams was oh, off track the there as turn. well. Got a little tight in the corner. The final corner there. I think I was looking at the wrong Adams. Got a Nick Adams and a Tristan Adams. Oh. No relation or relation, do you think? <laughs> oh, I'll never know. This I love the Mark asked. Martin paint scheme. That's so cool looking. Yeah, it's that's a real cool retro paint scheme that Nick's got going there. Um, that 25 car looks like it's put together well. 25 car, but it's also the number six car, so it could be kind of confusing. I'm interested to see how they get around Gary here and if they can do it safely. I don't think he's got much uh, much skin in the game here, but he's not exactly he's not exactly getting caught up here. Oh, oh, he goes off though in the corkscrew, a little bit of pressure maybe. <laughs> oh no. Nick oh, Adams. Oh, and Nick Adams. He is in the valley. Of sadness. Oh, that is Robin. There you go. And that gives Tim Junk the advantage to uh, pull away from the field. Let's go ahead and see if we can go back and see what happened to him there. You're good. You're good. You're good. You give me a lot of credit thinking I'm going to There's in this so much this. sand on the track. Yeah, he got right into all of that sand oh, and it man. just got him way loose. So. Good job keeping that thing off the wall, though, and uh, gathering it back up for a zero X out of that. Well, I give Mr. Um, Junk an eight second lead now. Nice. I think it's just going to depend on how much he can manage not getting wrecked by somebody. <laughs> oh, I see some damage on Ralph Connor, too. We'll have to go and see what happened to him at some point. Oh, yeah, I see it, too. As he comes up on Rick Evans. Wait, is that? Yeah. I gotta Rick, say, you see, he's still struggling. Yeah, I see that. I, I have it on crashes, too, by the way. Um, I got to say, they're doing a great job handling this car. I thought that this would be a lot more chaotic than it is, so I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I think uh, this car, it, it's just not given enough credit at times. With a proper setup and, you know, a decent enough driver behind the wheel, you can really get this thing to send. Uh, we've seen it do really well on super speedways as well as road courses, um, short tracks like they're built for. But Rick Evans taking that corkscrew beautifully there 
in that number 70 machine. Oh. Well, that is um, six laps or five laps in, so we're at 20% done. I really love um, Laguna Seca. It is, it is a really old track, actually, and I remember using this or racing here at Laguna, or at, blah, 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 on Gran Turismo, geez, Louise, Louise, I can't even talk, way back in the day, I was, it was, but at the time I hated it, I don't know why, but it's such a good track, but you can see why this, Justin, hold on to it, buddy, um, you Ooh. can see why it is called SRX Sandstorm, because, well, there's sand. Oh my god, and enough of it to last for a lifetime in your britches, I'm sure. Uh, these guys are going to be digging it out of their every crevice of their body for the next couple of weeks. So, Dude, Way to unlock a not-so-pleasant memory. Let's check in but, with old Mr. Junk, who now has a 10-second lead. But it looks like... that Mr. Adams is battling pretty good with Mr. Craighead. I love that paint scheme. I think some of these guys are getting the hang of that corkscrew now. We're going to start seeing some better times out on the track. There's a lot of great paint schemes. There really are. Oh, we got uh, one I still want to call him Sarek Divers coming on pit road. Yeah, it looks like he's got a little damage on the front end of that machine. And Gary Freeman just stopping there on the front stretch. What's going on with him? Let's go back and find oh. out. Oh, he got oh, loose. God. That's all. Hit the front end, but it looks like it's okay. Oh, Nick Adams also had missed that Close corner back there. One lap. Next lap, it doesn't stop at all. Yeah, it looks like he was just getting into the throttle a little too early there and then reams that right side wall. Man, that is tough luck for him. Talking about Gary? Talking about Gary. Check it with Robin. How's she doing? Oh, Let's oh, check it. oh my. Oh my. Oh. Man. Uh, she oh. never made it out of lap one. I'll go take a look and see what happened to her. Oops. You said lap one? Lap lap two, actually. Oh, what... Let's see if we can find out what happened to her. Oh, the corkscrew got her. Did it. Yeah, it's tricky. It doth be tricky. All right. See if she just missed her braking zone. Still got Nick Adams and oh, Cameron Craighead yeah. in a fierce battle for second, while Mr. Jonk continues to enjoy his now 11 second lead. Show up. Right. <laughs> the real base here is just for it looks like eighth place and seventh place. They are all bunched up together here. Ralph Connor, Rick Evans have been swapping positions for the past couple laps here. Oh, Connor getting a little loose in the entry. What number is Carol Connor again? Oh yeah, he's the, the uh, 80. The 80. Yeah, that's oh, quite burning. a little battle with those three or four cars. So iRacing says this is where the wreck's gonna happen, so Where? Where's it gonna happen? Oh you got it on crashes. I have it on crashes. <laughs> That's good, you can scout around for me. Ooh Rick Evans almost gets into the back of the eighty Ralph Connor going into the corkscrew, they're banging doors. Oh man. Hey uh, Justin, you're supposed to keep it on track. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. 
I, I put the off-road tires on. I just don't want to wear them out by driving on the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Those two, when they talk, it's re it's really funny. I love them. Let's check back in with our leader, old Tim Junk, up to now a almost 15 second lead. He is just laying these laps down out here. In fact, he stayed rather consistent, especially in the last two laps. Um, actually, that's practice. I'm sorry. He stayed rather consistent throughout his entire race here, running uh, 131.5, 131.8. Uh, and really just... Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, is that like Warfield? A blast. Warfield is off the track. Looks like he overshot it there. Oh, yeah. Or what happened there, Nick? I'm sorry, JB, for spinning. And I would probably find out. Let's take a look and see what happened to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. He just got Very loose coming out of the happened. corner. He, he, just, he just apologized to me. I'm not sure who was right behind spitting. Somebody got a nice... Uh, wow, it was a good save, though. Let me go back live here. I'm over here all over the place. That would have been me. And the little scrape I got on the wall as a result, it gave me wheel damage. These things have almost no integrity. <laughs> These things are soft as hell. Oh, there goes so DJ Sykema. The what number? Oh, yeah, I see him. Uh, 96. 96 is off track there. He just does a little loop-de-loop, -loop, gets it back on there. Dig it easy, buddy. Those tires are dirty. Yeah, get, get the, get the, get the sand Honda grains out. At Honda Day. Here goes Burns off track as well. We're sitting on lap 11 with him. And he brings it back on there. I'm gathers it back up. Oh, there we go. Seeing if he can find a way around DJ Sakima. In that 96. But was that thing that's black, gray, and like maybe navy blue or something? I don't know. That is a sharp looking color scheme he's got on there. I can't tell. I think it's gray. Oh, oh but he goes. He whips it. The sand right, particles well, were still in the tires. There Justin goes. almost uh, he taps the wall. You're supposed to say, Justin's wrecking, oh my god! Justin's wrecking, oh my god! <laughs> oh, shout out to that Talladega race. That was a great day. Mr. Gary Freeman hits pit road again. Mr. Junk, man, is if he can just avoid the lappers, he'll be fine. Yeah, I agree, and it, it seems like these guys, they're... They're trying to get a little more comfortable. The tires are starting to wear in more. You know, there, there's a lot of heat built up on the track, and I'm sure some rubber. There's an oh, oh, Justin, oh. Justin spins. He's still Yet in sixth again. place, though. But Jack Brown is going to catch him quickly, I think. That gave Warfield a chance to get around him and hopefully make up some more positions here. He's sitting in sixth, and he's not looking terrible. Just a look, some scrapes on his front end. Yep. Nothing too major. How about a shout out to Phil Connor? Good old Phil, man. He's doing great. Uh, Justin Justin burns off the track yet again. He's really having a hard time bringing some dirt back up there with him, too. Ooh. Oh, keep it steady. Keep it steady. As Justin works out the kinks in his tires, let's go back to Mr. Junk, who's now on lap 13. We are right about the halfway point. Derek Sivers got his machine back out on track. That thing's looking fresh and clean again, and he's just out here for a nice cruise. Still on 11th, though. Not doing terrible. Now we're checking in with Buttcrack Motorsports, who also, they got their front end pushed in a little bit there, but I, I think they'd rather have their front end pushed in than their back end, if you know what I'm saying. Oh my goodness. Well, can't argue that. Justin... I mean... <laughs> Buttcrack, I just love that name. Oh, he goes way wide coming out of that second corner. That's crazy.
Ralph Connor put some distance over here on Rick Evans. Yeah, I did not know Phil. Now that's our. You want to talk about a guy who knows how to make setups? His car looks like it's in great shape right now. He's got a little bit of left front damage, but nothing that's going to be too major for Arrow. It's so shiny. Uh, just some scrapes. I love that paint scheme, man. That is one cool looking retro ride, if you ask me. Um, love Bugs Bunny, one of my favorite characters. Wiley Coyote was always mine. And I swear I was the only person that wanted to see him catch a Roadrunner. Now, he's not too far off from Cameron Craighead here. Do you think he's he's going to be able to make up some time? Yes, without He's putting a doubt. down faster laps by two seconds. I see him right in front of him. Oh, in second place, Nick Adams. The n number 01 car here getting next to Kova. He really was putting the, the works to him. He wanted to get around him and try and see if he can catch back up to Tim Jonk. But, oh, my gosh. That'll put Kova he a lap down. The uh, next person on the lead lap would be our favorite Burnsy. Yeah, it looks like he may have went. Did he go in and get some tires? I don't know. I haven't. The only people I've seen on pits are people that have wrecked. Hmm. But it is halfway. There's a couple people. You got Robin and somebody else. I think it's the 70. Rick Evans is getting. Oh, yeah. Rick's getting tires. Might, ah. not, might not be a bad choice halfway in the race. I honestly don't think I would take tires. 25 laps I don't think would be too harsh, I think. Mm. If you need them, you need them. You know, that's that's the way it goes. Uh, on, the, on these courses with the setup that people don't really get to test too much on, you know, it, it could end up... It could end up meaning positions. It could end up meaning laps down. Looks like uh, Mr. Junk is getting ready to lap old Burnsy here. Let's go on board with him real quick. Yes, sir. It seems like he's got, uh, Justin's got all the sand out of his tires now. Seems like it. Oh, Tim gets <laughs> a little loose coming out of that corner. Did you see that? Gathers it up. Yes, I did. He really cuts over the apex of that last corner there and uh, uses every bit of track he can. But today, it looks like just being smooth and uh, a good setup really got him where he's at. Now we got Mr. Evans with new tires. I kind of want to see if he can, like, how much of a difference that makes. Hmm. Looking at his lap times here, he he was running pretty much uh, 138, 139 at oh! the end of his run. Did he Sorry just get into Phil? Yeah, he, he, he tapped him. Not not that bad. <laughs> no damage to Phil's car, though, so no worries. No damage to Rick, either. Looks like he got his fixed up. Yeah. He put in for a 141 that lap, but those were some cold tires. Let's see what happens after they warm up. That thing already looks like it's, it's running a lot better. Oh, Rick's? Ulrichs, yep, sitting in 12th yeah. place, but oh, oh no, he's he's that's one way to heat up the tires. Ah, uh, he'll be all right. Oh, here comes the Warfield though in the 21. Had to take an inside lane to avoid him. They're still side by side coming through the. Nick's still in fifth. Yes, he is. Running consistent lap times as well. I love this track. I wanted to get in here and race it, but, you know. As fun as it would have been, I think this is uh, just a wonderful opportunity to sit here and commentate this race with you today. I think we have a, a really good thing on our hands, though. And, this is this is something. And to say something real quick... uh. 
you know, this will take practice to get down, you know. Uh, there's things I'm going to have to adjust for the video and stuff like that. But if you guys are watching this and you want to join, I'm going to put... Oh, Bernsey's off the track again. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but you know what? He's still in the tent. Oh, and there goes DJ. He's in the corkscrew, and here comes... I don't know if Russell they Martin. see him. I don't know if Russell 20. sees him. It's, he's gathered it back up. DJ's got it back on the track. But as I was saying, if you guys watching this and you want to jump in, we knew, we still need people. It's it's usually going to have about 30 cars, I think. I may have to adjust that from race to race, but the link to the Discord will be in the description. Just come out and join, and I'd, I'd love to have you. All about promoting fun and positivity. Yeah. And helping I mean, each other out with setups and stuff. Yeah, it's there. All of it will be open. It all the information will be in the league section of my Discord. Um, but if you just want to race in this, all you gotta do is just join. It's not set up like a typical league. It'll be done through hosted sessions because it's so long. Like it's a fifty-two event season with thirteen quarterly season schedules, if you will. So it's almost like four seasons into one. Um, and it's first come, first race. Uh, right now, as you can see, we only have about. 15 or so, 15 or 18 active drivers that joined. I'm hoping it grows as time goes, but if not, hey, if you just want to come compete, you're welcome to. Uh, it's every Saturday at 11 Eastern. But when with the holidays coming up, I may skip a week or two with Christmas and Thanksgiving. Uh, I'll have to see what the, what the guys want to do. Might put it up to a vote. Got Jack Brown going down pit road here. Just seeing him hey, Ken, getting loose, spinning out. Well? What did he say? He He's saying he's an alien. Who's the 10? The 10? There is no 10. Yeah, there is no 10. What's he talking about? I don't know. All I know is that Mr. Jonk now has a 25 second lead. Sunday drive for him. Looks like he's wanting to... Get around oh, one. So he is ET. I get it. Derek Sivers. Of oh, Derek Sivers Racing. Now, Derek, we know, is a conservative driver. Oh, and it looks like DJ Sikama is over here blocking that whole racing line. But oh, he, yeah. Hang he on, does I, the right thing by holding his brakes. I'm going to go back and see what happened there. Oh, Derek, let's jonk by. And that's what I mean by a conservative driver, somebody who will recognize that they are holding up the leader or leaders and uh, will let them by respectfully. Yeah, I'm very pleased with how player. everyone's actually racing in here. So very, very good job on them. Yes, I have to say it's been an absolute respectful race so far from what I've seen. A little beaten, a little banging here and there, but... All in this, you know, for the sport of it, 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 no, no tempers or anything so far, and I, I like to see that. And tempers are gonna flare on occasion, you know. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Of course. Ooh. They're getting a little touchy. A little frisky over there. Frisky. Is he not reading the sign? On his. Yeah, I believe that's <laughs> Puck Crack Motorsports. <laughs> I don't know if I want to touch that. Uh, speak for yourself. Well now. Ah, <laughs> oh, Derek to the inside of him. Let him go. So yes, he is. Derek makes the pass on old Russell Martin. That was a great pass. Nick Adams not giving up, trying to catch up to Tim. As we have he's seven got, to go. And he's got Kova to contend with there in the 0-1 definitely a formidable opponent someone we we've seen run a lot of road especially with his own league the chaos on the roads which is a beloved series in the icw gaming yes uh community kind of oh man wow rick, rick evans you just see that ripping that thing <laughs> That was great. That was great, actually. I bet you gained some time doing that. But boy, <laughs> is it worth the risk. I guarantee you he, he barely let off. 
or as Mike Joy would say, I'm not pulling out. <laughs> Let's see. Miss Rubinsky is still in the pits. I gotta hand it to her for her crew trying to fix the car. Yeah, definitely. Uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. These guys are doing everything they can. I spoke to the pit crew <laughs> and the crew chief down there. They said they're doing everything they possibly can to get that thing back running. Uh, it's gonna take some time though. A lot of a lot of their systems have been damaged. So uh, look at finding some spare parts, and uh, a couple of the other teams have helped pitch in on that as well, uh, digging through their trailer, seeing what they could they could give to her to get her running again. But we've got DJ Sakima absolutely blocking that corkscrew again. Everybody taking off tracks for that to make sure they get around them safe. Oh no! And Burns gets spun. Oh dear. Kova gets into Justin Burns the 13 and brings them both around. Kova still well, doing donuts out on the racing line, and Phil Connor. Barely like I getting got, by there. See what happened there. Yeah, he just he just got into him. I think yeah, I think that's what happened. I think everyone just got out of rhythm from uh, the corkscrew there. If you have a license plate, I will report that. I mean, what if you don't take that specific line in there? It Straight it will you. absolutely disrupt the way that car handles coming down, and uh, you'll see something exactly like that. One car may get a better run than the other, and not anticipate a checkup and. One thing leads to another. Oh, we got a little bit of a blink from Warfield here because he crosses the line, but he's going to battle Kovalenko in the 01. Kova's just going to give it to him. I'm very happy with sportsmanship this race. Yes. It's been rather clean racing, except for maybe one or two contacts here or there, but uh, well, this has been. If it super fun to watch. Would it really be a road race if there wasn't some lap one, turn one stuff? It wouldn't be I race, an I racing road race. <laughs> Dude, they do that in real life, too. Oh, I know. I see it. I was it's watching that last thing. night. Millions of dollars. Millions and millions of dollars getting wrecked there. Yeah, this corkscrew, though, really seems to have been... Look at the bane of existence for a lot of these guys. The big battle seems to be between second and third of Nick Adams and Cameron Craighead. Yes, it is. And they are not too far away from each other here. It just all depends on who's got better tire, better handling, better tenacity. Who has the fortitude? <laughs> the fortitude. Have you? Would you believe me if I told you tenacity was one of my pages on my toilet paper word of the day it, oh okay so you learned what that was today not today it was a, a while back but it was one of my word of the days a, a lot better entry into one here by cameron craighead but we see nick adams getting a little loose there in that 25 babylon machine um he is still fast though on the exits of these corners I like this. I wanted to race in this. You know, I thought about it myself, and it, as fun as it would have been, I think I'm having a much better time calling it because I'm seeing so much more than I probably would behind my windshield. It's interesting to learn, isn't it? Absolutely. Now, the SRXs and official races, I know that they'll, you know, they do mostly short tracks. Oh, oh no, Nick! Holding up Craighead, but he's got a better advantage to the left side of him. That is a good move right there. He was waiting for it. <laughs> and the 58 of Craighead makes the clean pass around him, while Warfield in the 21 and Burns are just battling it out through that corkscrew as well. Honestly, Nick, you wasn't expecting me to throw it in there that time. <laughs> he says he didn't expect it. Let's see what he did. Sorry about that, Justin. I kind of wheel hopped a little bit. Downshifted a little too soon. Let's see. Oh yeah, he threw it in. You're good. <laughs> heck of a heck of a save though. Yeah, Warfield's on a tear. Oh, I think he got his I damage know, fixed as well. Let's take a look. He's got a No, little... he still yeah, has it. I, I, I was kinda thinking you were just gonna keep on going across, but you did not. <laughs> Sounds like Mr. Burnsy giving him some propage there. Check in with the leader. Thirty two seconds ahead, dude. Now holy moly. 
and that machine is clean. Look at that thing. Tim, did you practice? It looks like you practiced. If you did, I'm proud of you. Did a, doing a great job out there. Uh, let's take a look at Phil Connor, see where he's sitting now. He's got a little bit of traffic up there. He's got Nick Adams in his sight, though. He's fighting for the podium. We got two to go. You know, it's amazing to me because they had got a lot of distance on Phil at one point or another. And he has just been consistently working his way back up on this track, just making up time where Ooh. he can. Looks like Mr. So Junk avoided a spinner there. But he have two to go. We're going to go back here to this battle. We got right now we got Craighead in second. Nick Adams in third and Phil is really reeling him in. They got two to go here at the line. Can he catch him? Who who's that back there? Tristan Adams haven't said much about him this race, but his car's looking not half shabby, but 12th position. That's got to that's got to put a little wrinkle in your pants you know what i'm saying well so with mr junk way ahead it looks like he's got this wrapped up i want to see how second through fourth are gonna do right now craighead has a couple seconds but can oh, mr Phil's... connor make the pass he has... he has caught him he has he's got about a lap and a half to make his magic happen I think he's going to be able to make this happen. He's been strong all day. Nick, you can see he's been getting loose in some areas, especially when he's been put under some pressure here. So let's uh, let's see how it plays out. Looney Tunes versus Valvoline. <laughs> That's something I'd never thought I'd hear. <laughs> Coming here through the corkscrew. That right front just coming completely off the ground for Phil's <laughs> machine. All right. We have the white flag. Thanks to Mr. Jonk. Oh, Nick Adams gets into the sand a little bit. Phil's a side by side to his right. He's going to go ahead and break early oh, and make the there switch he goes. back. Oh, and oh, Nick he Adams turns spins him. him. Oh. No. Get that thing moving, dude. And then that Mr. Warfield is going to take fifth or fourth from him. That bites. Let's go back and we'll have to go back and look at that once the race is over. That could be a protest. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what the drivers do. There is a protest section in the Discord. And that puts Nick in fourth. Mr. Craighead Ooh. is still in second. Nick Adams is off track. third. So Warfield but fourth, this race, Connor fifth. This race is going to be belong to Mr. Tim Junk with a commanding 32 second lead. Good job, man. That's right. Oh, oh, he and stops. He's just, Why is he no, stopping? Keep going, keep going. It oh, ain't over yet, he's dude. showboating a little bit. It looks like. And Mr. Junk wins it. He wins it, drifts it into turn one. <laughs> and uh, you can see, you can tell that guy is happy right now. Yeah. There he goes. <laughs> All right, let's see Mr. Craighead. He's in second. Here he comes. He did a really good job, too. That car looks clean. Uh, he's got a little of left front damage, but looks like it, that final corner is really kicking everybody's ass over here he's gonna finish second here and here we got mr nick adams he did a good job there's a little controversy with that uh that spin though i'm sure phil ain't gonna be too thrilled and then our own nicholas yeah, phil, warfield yeah, really sorry for that yeah. let's, let's go back and phil's gonna let's get go fifth. back and take a look take a look at that yeah we're gonna have to go back and look at that i'm gonna go this one that was a big battle. <laughs> I can't believe I just took 10th place in reverse. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going back this. So he overshoots. Oh, he just comes back and just keeps coming. I just had no tires. For like the Phil went for the switch back and uh, 
five laps. Nick Adams just not realizing he was there. Maybe his spotter didn't say anything, but at least Phil didn't get any damage off of that and was able to complete the last lap without uh, yeah. any issue. I mean, still top five, so great job for him. Um, yeah, that, those are still good points. All right, let me go ahead and talk to him. All right, let's go ahead and bring in... Who's that in the waiting room? That's Flip Flip. Tim! We got we got the winner here. How's it going, Tim? Tell us about your race. Man, first first couple laps. I wasn't expecting a standing start, by the way. That was a bit, that was <laughs> yeah. a bit difficult to get the car off the road. Yeah, yeah. it was a uh, road course, road rules, you know, that kind of thing. But, man, you did a fantastic job, man. Yeah, about halfway through, I started thinking if everybody had a setup or not. I guess I could have dropped the setup, but... Well, it's okay. With, with the wheel having such crazy races, really my only option is to just have it open for people. Um, I'll try to help people as I can, but there are definitely drivers that are more skilled than I am in making setups. That was quite the commanding lead you had on everybody, though, Tim. Tell us how it felt uh, just basically running your way through the field, putting people laps down at a time. Uh, what was going through your head the whole time you were running? Don't crash. Don't huh. crash. Yeah, when you were pretty much more than 15 seconds ahead, I was like, well, I don't think anything's going to stop him unless maybe a lap car kind of gets into him or something. Yeah, I was being very careful with the lap cars. I didn't want to touch him, Didn't kind of didn't want to be near any one of them. Some of them were a bit going off-road and stuff like that. It's well, difficult, difficult out there. Yeah, I don't know if the SRX has ever run a road course before official or not. I know they do short I'm... tracks and dirt, but I don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen them on a road course. It looks like you had quite a battle with Nick Adams for the most part. And uh, early on in the race, you just decided to let him go. Was that a tactical move on your part? Did you feel like you could catch up to him later? Uh, no, my left foot wouldn't stop shaking. <laughs> it wouldn't oh. stop shaking. Got some adrenaline going on there. I, I can totally uh, attest to that. I've had the same issue since I started, but uh, a lot of back and forth between you and, and Nick Adams and the 25 Valvoline machine. We got, You guys put on a hell of a show there in the early laps of the race uh, and truly just a great dominating performance from you, Tim. Do you have anything to say uh, to your friends, fans, family? Uh, thank you for opening this series and thank you for making it free. Heck yeah, man! It's uh, I appreciate you uh, joining, and uh, like I said, next uh, next week we don't know where it's going to be at yet, but I'll make sure to post that. All right, see you next week. Thanks, Tim. Take Good care. win. All right, and we got Mister Nicholas Adams. Let's Not go ahead enough. and bring him in. One Nicholas Adams. What's up? Hello. <laughs> All right, man. You came in third. Very good job. I would like to know. I noticed for a while you were battling with Tim in the beginning. Um. Yeah. Like. Yeah. We were fighting hard in the first couple of laps, and then uh, when we came to the corkscrew, I uh, got too. I I hit uh, too much on the throttle. I ended up spinning in, and just kept m making mistakes and mistakes afterwards. I gotcha. Now the big elephant in the room is what happened with phil so file so he i i basically uh brakes was hot tires were hot i um i struck i struggled and i try to give him much room he he passes me cleanly in the inside and then i i get on the throttle i wiggled and unfortunately that's when i hit him yeah it definitely and, didn't look intentional um it looks like you maybe just just clipped him coming back on that's that happens but you still did a fantastic job, man. Yeah, it's just, um, yeah, like it. Even though I had the wrong setup, like I, I, I tried my best, and and like I said, I hope Phil's listening to this. I, no, no hard feelings, man. Like, no, nah, no, nah, it, it stuff, stuff's gonna happen. Um, that is, uh, you know, it's just hard racing, and it's just like, miscalculations are gonna happen. I just don't want you feeling too bad about it. Uh, you did a great job. Congrats on third place. Make sure to check the points once uh, uh, once we get done here. Uh, all right, awesome. Thank you. 
All right, man. Good, uh, good third place, and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Take care, man. Take care. All right. So, well, we've got fourth place in in the. Uh... Yeah, let's go ahead and bring in. Let's go ahead and bring him in. People want to come in here and be interviewed. That's cool. I was hoping to get Cameron Craighead, but we have Nicholas Warfield with a fourth place finish. Hello, sir. What's going on? What'd you think? It was fun. I wish I uh, could have gotten home sooner to tweak that setup a little bit. That road base just isn't kind of. I like a loose setup, but I don't like uh, burn the rear tires off loose setup. <laughs> I got to say, dude, um, you're always a major, major threat on a road course. Um, for you to just hop in there and come and forth is pretty good. It was fun watching you race with Justin. Yeah, that was that was entertaining. I don't know if you saw my, my 360 and keep on going. I saw where you came. I don't know what turn it was, but there was one where you, it was, the, it was a couple turns after the corkscrew. Looks like you threw it out in the sand a little bit. Oh. Yeah, I got way out there. Yeah, I don't think I saw a 360 and keep going, though. I'll have to see if uh, I yeah, I, I spun all the way around right before I went off. It was some really, really good racing. I am, I'm actually very pleased with how the car seemed to handle on a road course. I don't think they've ever done a official there before. I don't think so. Looks like you and Cody. So it it didn't do bad battle. at all. And then you had a decent turnout, too. Well, it looks like you did a great job working your way up through the field after uh, such a crazy turn one lap, one incident. And yeah. we we kind of had our sights on you the whole day. The whole I kind of turned in on, uh, I think it was Ralph. I didn't know he was there on lap one. He stuck his nose in there under braking. I don't know if it was intentional or just overdrove it a little bit, but yeah, I kind of had an oh shit moment at the bottom of the corkscrew. <laughs> Well, you did fantastic. Like, oh. A lot of people had a no shit moment at the end of the corks. Watch, watch. Here. <laughs> watch. Car rolled out right in front of me. Oh, that's right. And you went right through him. I did see that and thought that was impressive. Phil Connor did the same move as well. Now we see the 130 over there. Oh, just... oh. speaking of Phil. What happened uh-huh. to him there at the end? Well, we're going to find right, out. Let's go uh, ahead. Let's go and bring him in with us. All righty. Hello, Phil. Phil. Hey, Phil. What's going on? So we did already talk to Mr. Nicholas Adams, and he wanted to apologize. Well, I guess he shouldn't have turned his wheel left. (laughs) So what happened there? I didn't even get to see it. All I saw was I I faked him into. Yeah, I faked him into going out. I went to the outside, and I knew I knew his tires was gone because I caught him. So I went to the outside on turn eleven. Braked early, braked hard, downshifted. He blew the corner. I went on the inside, was clear up past him, and I even went back and looked at the end car. And he's turning right to get, you know, to to stay off of me. And at the last second, you can just see his steering wheel. He just kinks it left a little bit, taps me, and turns me around. Well, let's go ahead and look at the cockpit view of this, and we can make a determination <laughs> right now. Well, I'll tell you what. It doesn't look like he did it intentionally. Um, and he was very remorseful. I would be I too if it was on the last lap and I wasn't going to get penalized for it. I yeah. don't think he knew you were there, Phil. Honest to God. Oh, he knew I was coming. I've been all—I was all over him the whole previous lap. Oh, he knew. Yeah, he knew because I—we were—we were definitely noticing you were gaining on him a lot, and you did a great job. And you know, yeah, it looks like he just overdrove that entry a little bit. Yeah, I'm watching here, and I you can just he see it close, it up close it in. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was trying to get back in the throttle, it sounded like, but he was in a low, or he was in a pretty high gear, too, so I don't know. It's some pretty low RPMs, but it's, uh... regardless of that, man, I... I got to commend you. That was a great race. You kept your car pretty clean throughout the whole thing. Just yeah, a little you did bit great. Of damage. Oh, um, yeah. I was trying to keep Nick behind me, but you see how that happened. Well, <laughs> I was trying to run you down. Well, I, no, just, I was watching a relative. Didn't have the setup to do it very easily. I just ran to Watkins Glen. 
didn't even know there was a walk and split setup. Otherwise, I would have run that. I ran the road yeah, base. Uh, you know, I run Watkins Glen, and when it started, when I'd get on the brakes and it started pushing, I just back a brake bias off to the rear. Right. I mean, that's that's the reason I was able to catch back with up with everybody that you know. I think they had like six seconds on me at one point, but right. I'd say they probably didn't change their brake bias and just burnt their front tires completely up. Yeah, mm. that's one trick I've learned when it comes to those heavier cars. I was trying to see if anybody. Uh, would pit for tires. I saw Rick pit for tires. Yeah, I did see. I that. thought about it, but I, then I got to think. You know, I, my my. I mean, this is going to sound childish. My main concern was Nick, because I'm like, you know, I'm in. I'm in fourth. I can. I can stay here if I pit and get tires. Am I going to be able to run him back down? Probably not. Now, when you say Nick, you mean yeah, Warfield here. <laughs> Well, he is always a favorite on the road courses. Well, I knew well, where he started, and I knew what happened to him when he got spun. And, and then you knew I ran you back down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was 17 seconds, then it was 14, then it was 12, then it was 8, and I'm like, all right, we got six laps. <laughs> Doing the math. I, I, yeah, I'm like, I ain't no way I'm stopping for tires. <laughs> <laughs> I think it really just depended on the track. I personally would not have probably taken tires. Oh, there was yeah, no way. I, I only went out with tires. 18 gallons of fuel, too. Oh, there you go. You didn't need a full tank. Yeah. 15, wow. 15 gallons was like 26 laps. So I just like, eh, I'll just give me a little extra. That's also why I wanted to leave the setups open, just to give people the freedom. And not to mention, some of these races we're going to have, they're not going to have fixed setups available. Some of them are pretty crazy. This one, and some of them are quite tame all across the license classes. This one, it's kind of in the middle. SRX is on a road course don't really happen, but it's not an insane race, you know. No, I think the car I think the car fits road courses fairly well. It looked like everyone was controlling the car pretty well for the most part. Let's see who has yeah. the least amount of incident points. Oh, definitely not me. Oh yeah, let's take a look at that. Incidents was uh Robin only had Robin. four, but she spent most of the time on the pits because I saw the corkscrew ate her. Looks like it was yeah, I saw looks that. Like it was I Tim had, had seven. To that. Uh, yeah, Ray Tim had nine, and Phil, you only had nine. Yep. DJ had I sixty-two. I only had, what I have ten. You 16. had sixteen. I went ahead and turned incident points off just to kind of give people a break because of how crazy right. they it, you know the car was on the track. Um, I didn't want people to be spending their times on pit road but you guys did great um anything else you guys want to say before i yeah spin the wheel see where we're going next week all right i'm gonna go ahead and get right on that and post it in the announcements but i thank you guys very much for joining no oh, no problem that was fun no I problem. Had a blast. yeah let's it was say a lot. It was oh. a lot of fun to commentate and to call and to watch, yes. guys. So thank you, thank you, Joe, for joining me. I you definitely liven it up. <laughs> oh yeah, anytime. So, but other than that, I uh, let me go ahead and get you guys out of here. Then I'm gonna have a kick final us. word. Come on, kick us, Joe. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll see you later, guys. See, see ya. Have you guys?